All right, here in snowy Montana, it wasn't snowy yesterday. All of a sudden we had a blizzard blow in and poof, back to winter. We had spring for like a second. I took a two week uh, little break because I had my very first surgery. I had a hernia repaired in my belly button. And uh, yeah, it was something I needed to have done probably like eight or nine years ago and finally got it done. But anyway, what I wanted to do is talk about the total solar eclipse that's coming up April 8th, 2024. Now I'm going out to Texas to see it because that's where the line of totality passes through like parts of Texas and then all the way up until Maine or all the way up to Maine. And so if you have the chance to go and see it, uh, I would highly suggest going to check out the total solar eclipse. This will be your last chance to see it for the next 25 to 26 years here in the United States, here in the lower 48. I would strongly suggest going to see the total solar eclipse. It is quite a, an experience. It's very humbling. Uh, it's about as close to a spiritual experience as I can imagine. Uh, it really kind of puts things into perspective. It's a very, very cool thing to witness and to be a part of. Dustin from Smarter Every Day did a really good video about the total solar eclipse and some of the effects that happened during it. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. The last time the total solar eclipse happened back in 2017, I was hired to work on a car commercial to shoot time lapse for it. And I was so busy managing four different cameras with this car and all this other stuff. I feel like I really didn't get a chance to really uh, enjoy the total solar eclipse. It was so amazing that just to see it and to photograph it and all this stuff. But I feel like I, I kind of missed um, kind of being able to take my time with it. And, you know, it was a job, you know, and I'm hoping that I don't have another job for this next one coming up. But it was rough, like managing four different cameras. I had like a red camera with like a 200, 600 millimeter lens. I've actually been testing out, uh, just kind of uh, taking video of the moon when that comes up using a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I think a 200 millimeter lens for me this time around, I think I'm just gonna shoot with that and then stuff that's wider than that 200 millimeter because I feel like being so close up to the to the actual eclipse like in like with a lens it, you kind of miss a lot of like what's going on around the sun when it's being blocked out and so like there's this whole big thing where you can kind of see the corona of the sun it, it extends out way further than you think it would and i feel like when you're zoomed in so far in a camera you're kind of like gonna miss a lot of that action so I'm not gonna use like a really tight lens. I'm probably gonna use like a 70, 200 millimeter lens and then like some wider lenses to kind of like capture the whole environment and stuff like that. Um, hopefully it all works out. Hopefully there's good weather when this happens, when the solar eclipse happens. Um, yeah, hopefully. I was planning on going to the Trinity site uh, in New Mexico where they detonated the first atomic bomb before the total solar eclipse happen because uh, the open house was supposed to be on April 6th and the total solar eclipse was supposed to happen on April 8th. But for whatever reason, uh, the government decided uh, that they're not gonna have the spring open house uh, at the Trinity site this year. Probably for some budgetary BS government shutdown thing, whatever, I don't even know. Uh, I think it's really sad that they're doing that because that site is like super popular now after that the Oppenheimer movie came out. So it just seems like uh, a real shame that they're only gonna have one this year. And I mean, who knows, unless they decide to cancel that one too. It just seems kind of strange to cancel the one in the springtime. Cause personally, from my experience of being in the desert uh, in the springtime, it's a lot better than being there in the fall. That's just my opinion about it. I mean, it, both times weather can be very unpredictable, but springtime for me at the Trinity site has been uh, very good every time I've been. But as uh, far as videos coming up, I got one about this, uh, th that piece of glass I had in the last one from that lens. I actually found one of those lenses on eBay for 200 bucks. And so I'm gonna kind of go over and examine that lens when it's all put together and like, um, the different radioactive elements, uh, like glass elements that are in there. I already know it has thorium inside of it. 
Um, but it's a cool lens to check out and it's cool that I was able to find it for $200 because I'm sure that lens cost probably $50,000 back in the day, back in the 70s when it was produced. And then the other video I'm planning on doing is one about a box of radioactive material that a Patreon member sent me that they sent it to me back in the summer and I'll finally get around to uh, making a video about it. So that should be fun. It'd be kind of interesting to see uh, what's in there and use the Radicode 103 or the Radicode 102 to identify the different radioactive isotopes that are in there. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions about like what settings to use to shoot the total solar eclipse, like on a camera, uh, I will share my settings uh, down in the comments. Uh, all you have to do is ask and I'll tell you, because I, I do believe in sharing information when I can. But anyway, take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.